It's not like like that one te that one quiz was pretty much worksheet four. That's not what the test is going to be like. Um, as long as you can do what we're going to do in class tomorrow for the official review session, you're in really good shape. Um, but yeah, a lot of that is going to be those curved mirrors and those lenses. So let's take a look at some of those. All right. By popular demand, we've got the mirror. Focal point is right there. And this is kind of the funky scenario where the object is in front of the focal point. And that will oftentimes make our lives a little bit more difficult. So we've got a couple things we can do. What color should I use for light rays here? Green. Red? How many votes for red? How many votes for green? I don't know, that's about even. Well, We'll start with red, and then we'll do green on the next one. So what happens with the first light ray that I want to shoot off of this object? It's going to come in parallel. Um, do you guys want some like blank pieces of paper to just kind of do this off of, or do you have your own in your notebooks? Okay. If anybody needs some blank paper, let me know, and I have some in the back, and I can get it for you. So the light ray comes in parallel. And then it hits the mirror. And where's that light ray going to go to next? I heard it once. Focal point, yeah. Because it's coming in parallel, it's going to hit the mirror and go through the focal point. This is a converging mirror. It takes light rays that are going in like this, and then it converges them to a point. And that point would be the focal point. And there it goes, right through the focal point. And if you're, you know, you don't have to memorize if it's concave or convex. The main thing is that by the shape, you can tell that it's either going to be converging the light rays or diverging the light rays. And if you're ever unsure, just think about what's going to happen if you throw a bunch of ping pong, ping pong balls at it. If I throw a bunch of ping pong balls at this mirror, they're going to bounce and they're going to come towards this area because of the way the mirror is shaped. So you can kind of use that a little bit. This is converging. Because if I threw a ping pong ball like this, it would hit the mirror, and it would bounce going down that way. And if I threw it here, based on this angle, it would hit, and it would bounce going up. So it would converge those together. So that's our first light ray. Next, we've got the focal point parallel one. But I'm in front of the focal point. I can't shoot a light ray through the focal point. It'll never hit the mirror. So then what do I have to do? Keep it going starting where? At the Yeah. Right here? Or here? Oh, hold on. That's okay. <laughs> this is why we're doing this. It's tricky stuff. Oh, oh I got it. So yes. It's right on the money, yeah. So this next light ray we're going to do is the focal point parallel light ray. Because this is the parallel focal point one. So we've got to do the opposite. So. And because we're in front of this focal point, we can't blast a light ray through it. So what we do is we line up a light ray with the focal point so it goes up at that angle. So it's as though it had originated from the focal point, goes up at that angle, hits the mirror, and because it's coming from the focal point, it will leave going parallel. You've always got that relationship to fall back on. Parallel focal point, focal point parallel, whether you're dealing with lenses or mirrors, it holds true. <laughs> so yeah, now we've got these two light rays. They're moving away from each other. They will never, ever cross. So under those conditions, we have to take those two light rays and follow them backwards until they do cross. Make sure that you don't do anything with these two light rays. You, you never do any kind of following back with the original light rays. It's always the ones that are reflected if you're dealing with mirrors, or it's the ones that are refracted if you're dealing with lenses. So it's always the second one that you draw that you have to follow back. So that's what we're going to do here. These are the reflected light rays. 
going back. Same with this one. And they cross in this location. So that is where our image is going to form. So will the image look like this? That's right, it will look like that. We always must draw our image so it extends down towards the middle. And is it upright or inverted? Very good. Bigger or smaller? Very good. Real or virtual? Nice. Should we do the other mirror where we have to follow them back? Yeah. In astronomy, we are leaving Earth officially today to start exploring our solar system. Wow. That's right. Sounds intense for space. I know. I told everybody to bring their spacesuits, so uh, I hope they do. I know. That would suck. Among other things, yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things we look at in astronomy is what would happen to you if when we reach each of the planets, if you just stepped out of the spacecraft without a spacesuit on. It's pretty interesting what happens in some of those locations. Mars would be the one you'd last at the longest, but you'd still die pretty fast. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say you might last for a couple minutes before passing out. Do you like the Martian? Yeah, that's a really good one. I like that one. Oh yeah, Venus, you would die like instantaneously. Well, Venus has a great yeah, Venus is the place you would probably die the quickest. Um, any guesses on how hot it is on Venus? It's like a million degrees. <laughs> Not quite a million. Think of it like this: if you're cooking, if you're cooking a frozen pizza like I do, probably more than I should. Um, yeah, 425 degrees. That's that's the temperature for frozen pizza. Venus is exactly twice, not exactly, it's about twice that, 864 degrees. Oh, so you're saying you could cook a pizza faster? Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you could cook it faster, but it's going to burn on you because you got to have just that right temperature. So even if you did get to Venus, you couldn't even make a pizza properly, which is reason enough for me to stay away. Oh. Oh. They're, they're decent. Do you like Papa John's or no? No, I like Pizza Hut. Yeah, I, I like Pizza Hut, but I like their stuffed crust. But what I've found over the years is the actual pizza on the Pizza Hut seems to get thinner and thinner every single year. It's like almost... Okay. I like the thicker stuff. I like Rocky Rococo's. My dad, my dad makes pizzas. Nice. So I don't really like other pizzas other than like if it's Domino's and I know. Right. He makes them from scratch, you mean? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. We used to own a, or have a booth like at fairs, but like we retired that. It was okay. like a hobby. Oh, that's awesome. My wife and I have done that a couple times, but they never turn out <laughs> real tasty. I mean, it's fun to eat your own pizza for <laughs> for that, but for us, I think we might need some secret ingredients or something. So there's your object. Uh, if you want to figure out where this image is going to form, we got to start by doing light rays, and just like the other example, we got to start with a parallel light ray. If you're not sure where to start and you're totally lost, just draw a parallel light ray, and then everything else might come to you while you're doing that. So as long as you start with a parallel light ray, you're not wrong yet. So, how many points are there? Uh, 
I mean, it depends on, on the type. Some problems are, are short, some are longer. The test overall is going to be 30 points, maybe a little bit more. So. Curved? No. You okay. guys won't need it curved. You'll be just fine. So if this light ray is coming in parallel, this is not the kind of mirror that's going to take light rays and converge them. This is a diverging mirror, and you know that because if you threw a bunch of ping pong balls at it, those balls would bounce all different directions. They would not focus on one location. So this light ray is going to hit this mirror. We know by the angle it's going to bounce up a little ways. How do we figure out the exact angle it bounces up? Yes. You line it up right with that focal point. And that is how we know the angle at which it leaves. Just like that. And for mirrors, you know, because this is curved in that way, the focal point's on this side. So that's one part that's a little less confusing with these mirrors as opposed to lenses, because lenses have focal points on both sides. With this one, you're not tempted to blast a light ray through a focal point and have it come out parallel. This is the only focal point here. So the second light ray, you aim at the far focal point. It will hit and come out parallel. And once again, these two reflected light rays will never, ever, ever, ever cross. Ever. And so we got to follow them both backwards. We did that with this one when we lined it up with the focal point. Now we got to do it with the second one. And when we do that, it will end up crossing at this location. And that's where the tip of your arrow forms. Right about there. It is smaller, it is upright. Is it real or is it virtual? Virtual. Yes, very good. Did you want to see the same kinds of examples with the lens or should we do something different? I'm fine. I don't know. Okay. Any, anybody want to see the lens? Lenses? No, okay. Let's yeah, let's do at least one and then maybe we'll. Probably a Snell's law, huh? There will be one of those on the on the test. Just one. Yeah, I could put more on if you want more. No, extra credit. <laughs> no. Oh, that reminds me, extra credit. Um, so every I don't know four years or so, I run out of Kleenex boxes, and uh, that would be this year. So if you guys want a little bit of extra credit, you get one point per Kleenex box you bring in, up to just three boxes. So if that's something you're interested in getting some extra points for, feel free to do that between now and the end of next week. Sound good? Awesome. Cool. Okay, for the lens, let's do let's do the converging lens one where the object is in front of the focal point. Mm -hmm. Here's our focal point, there's our object. First light ray, I'll give you a sec to write it down. Yeah. A good pizza just hits the spot, doesn't it? So the first light ray is going to be your parallel light ray. So it comes in like so, hits the lens, and I got to draw the other focal point in. And because this is a converging lens, it takes that light ray and bends it down. So the lenses that you see that are shaped kind of like elongated footballs uh, those are your converging lenses. That's one light ray. Uh, the other light ray is going to be the focal point parallel one. And because we're in front of the focal point, we can't aim at that focal point. 
uh, we can't aim at this one either because, I mean, this is a converging lens. If I would aim it at this focal point, it would take that light ray and bend it down even more. And that's not going to help us. So what we want to do with this is, we will, just like with the mirror example, we want to line a light ray up with the back focal point, And it will continue upwards as though it came up from that, from that spot. And just like you guys have been doing already, if your light ray goes above the lens, you continue that lens up till it hits. And because this light ray is coming from the focal point, it hits right there and comes out parallel. Those two light rays will never ever cross, so we follow them backwards just like we do with the mirror examples. Uh, again, make sure you're following the refracted light rays back, not the original ones. So that's where our image is going to form. It is upright. It is bigger. And is it real or virtual? Yes, it is virtual. And again, there's two ways to tell that. Number one, you've got these virtual pretend dotted line light rays that make up the image. If it was the actual light rays, the solid ones that cross, then it would be a real image. Uh, the other way is we know it's upright. And almost all the time, an upright image is going to be a virtual image. The only time that's not the case is if you've got more than one lens, and we don't get quite that far, as much as I know you'd love to. And we'll be doing some more of those on the review day tomorrow. Hopefully that's enough to really get the gears turning. Ten minutes. Let's hope, let's try and do one Snell's Law problem, and then let's try and do, do you remember at the very, a long time ago, when we had that, that mirror that was like this, and there was the number over here, and I said you have to be able to show with light rays how the image shows up on the other side? Um, we did it in class briefly, and maybe we can do that again too. So let's do a quick Snell's Law problem. We'll just make this error. Index of refraction of air is 1. Water is 1.33. Light rays going into the water. This looks like it's about 45 degrees. So first off, and this is another thing that you have to make sure you're aware of, it's not just Snell's Law problems that you have to know. You've got to be able to tell what direction this light ray is going to go as it goes from a fast medium to a slow one and vice versa. So let me use the big guy. Is this light ray going to bend down or across? Down. It's going to bend down, exactly, because if you think about it, you got the car coming in. It's in the fast medium right now because this is the air. Now the front right tire is in the water. So this one is traveling slower. This wheel is then traveling faster because it's still in the fast medium. So that's going to cause the car to turn down. And it's going to cause the light ray to do the exact same thing. Turn downwards. If you would like to bring in a Hot Wheels car for the test to help with this, you're more than welcome to do so. All right. If I so, no, that would be awesome. I would love to see your old glasses. So we're looking for the angle now that it's going to make in the water, and by our observations, it should end up being less than forty-five degrees. So all we do is we plug numbers into Snell's law, which is that's okay. So 
So this is the equation for Snell's law. Everything on this side will be one medium, the one where you begin. Everything on this side is the medium that you end in. So in this case, air is all the stuff on the left, and the water is all the stuff on the right. So N1 is where we begin. That's air. So that's 1. And our angle is 45 degrees. So 1 times the sine of 45 is equal to N2, index of refraction number 2. That's the water times the sine of the angle, and we don't know that angle. In order to get it, we have to do a little bit of math. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to take this 1.33 and get it out of this spot. We want to get it to the other side. So we, we divide both sides by 1.33 in order to do that. Of course, 1 times sine 45 is just sine 45. So it's going to be sine 45 over 1.33 equals the sine of our angle. Any questions on how we got from here to here? Okay. So now we got to get rid of this sine. Anybody remember how we do that? Inverse. inverse sine. So you just use the little inverse button on your calculator and uh, you change that sine to an inverse sine. And you take the inverse sine of this whole thing. And when you do that, you're going to get an angle. Because I just came up with this, I don't know what that angle is. Um, but hopefully it's less than 45 degrees. What do we got? That sounds reasonable. By 1.33... Inverse sine. Yeah, I got 32.1 degrees. And that's how you would solve for your degrees right there. That's my favorite type of math. Nice. If, 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 that's, if that's easy, you're going to be just fine on the Snell's Law problem. Okay. How much time do we have? Five minutes. Five minutes. Let's see. 55. So th three and a half minutes we got. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm going to go through this one kind of quick because we will hit it up again tomorrow. But this is question one on the test. Maybe uh, we got the number two or something. What you have to do is you have to show, this is a mirror here, you have to show how it is that the observer sees the number two on the other side of the mirror. So what you would do is you would pick a couple locations on your number and you would use a straight edge to measure how far they are from the mirror and you would just put a dot on the opposite side of the mirror in that location. So if this is two inches away from the mirror, I would put a dot two inches on the other side because that's just how mirrors work. And then it'd be like right here. This dot, 11, 42, and this dot, 2, and we're over here, 1, So these would be our three locations. Uh, these two are connected like that, and this one would go like this, because it's like a mirror image of the two. And then two minutes left, right? Yeah, two minutes. So here's what we do then. Once you have your, your number or whatever it is drawn in, it's a two-step process. Step number one is to line up each dot with the eyeball from this side, and you just draw a straight line. That straight line is going to be dotted on that on the underside of the mirror, and it's going to be straight when you cross. So they're going into the eyeball. 
And then the last step is to draw a line from each of these dots to the point where these light rays are crossing the mirror. So this dot crosses, see that dot corresponds to this one, so it crosses at this location. So I draw a light ray like this. Yeah, there'll be one like this on the test. And then this one here crosses right here, that corresponds to this one. Of course, this one is the last one, it goes there. So this is what's happening. The light rays are going in, they're hitting the mirror, they're bouncing up into the eyeball. Uh, we'll go through this one more slowly tomorrow during the review session. But that's the idea.